Here with more on these hardship withdrawals, Nicole Lappin, anchor of CNBC's Worldwide Exchange. Nicole, good morning. Good, good to morning. see you. One of the more troubling aspects are the people who are making the withdrawals, the demographics here. What age group are we talking about? It's startling because we saw terrible jobs numbers this week. And not only are the statistics for people withdrawing from their 401k troubling, but more staggering is that the people doing so are 35 to 55 years old. And why is that so troubling? Is because those, as you know, are peak earning years. So they're, they're taking their retirement retirement money here in the, in the time that they're going to be uh, amassing a lot of money. What do you have to do for a withdrawal, for a hardship withdrawal? Obviously, certain qualifications. You need to demonstrate this to the government. So it's twofold. It can either be personal or it can be based to your primary residence. So if it's personal, it's education expenses or tuition expenses, huge medical expenses or a funeral or burial cost. Or if it's related to the primary residence, it's preventing foreclosure, preventing eviction, or a significant repair or damage to your home. We are not talking about putting a deck in here. Right, Lester. but you also have to go through your employer, and each employer has a set of specific rules too, don't they? Yeah, you not only have to go through the government, but you have another layer going through your employer, and there's two ways that you can do that. First, you can provide your financial documents, and if you do that, you can contribute back into your 401k almost immediately with your next paycheck. If you self-certify, you don't have to provide a lot of documents, but you have to sit on the bench. You can't contribute to your 401k for about six months. But, but isn't there some language in there that does allow you to make these withdrawals penalty free? There are, and you have to meet very specific uh, specifications to have that exemption. If you were permanently disabled recently, if uh, medical expenses exceed 7.5% of your gross adjusted income, or if you are beholden to alimony payments or child support payments, or if you were recently laid off or fired and you are 55 years or older. But for everybody else, you're going to pay the 10%, you're going to pay the, 10%, 10%. You're going to pay the income tax. So if you take out... If I take out $10,000, yep. I may only see what? Okay, let's do the math there. Yeah. $10,000, you skim off 10% off the top, so that's $1,000. Let's say you're in the 28th percentile tax bracket. You skim off $2,800 more, so you're left with $6,200 there, and that's not even including state or local taxes. That's just federal taxes. So there's taxes. a real, real pinch here. All right, Nicole Lappin, thanks so much. Good to have you you're on welcome. this morning.